place to start is at the end. Um, can you just talk us through your, your emotions watching that unfold? Yeah. Oh, it was um, three tries in the last five minutes to win it, lose it, win it. Um, you know, that's, that's probably the fluctuations of, of emotions. Um, you're up, you're down, you're up. Um, but one thing I thought stayed up was was the effort from the from the team. Um, I thought England kicked really well today. They're, they're very strong in the air. Um, Tommy Freeman particularly uh, got got a, a few balls back for them, and then sliding the ball through. They started like that. Uh, Ollie Lawrence picking up that early one and, and scoring on the back of it, and then um, even toward the end of the game, we knew that they'd go a short kick off. They got that back and. Um, slid it through again to get the five metre scrum, which uh, they built the the try for for Mara Otoje from. So, you know, <clears throat> I think we identified a few things. Didn't necessarily solve them all, but what we did solve was we found a way to get the to get the points we needed at the end of the game and, and to get our nose in front. At fifteen three down, it, it you know it wasn't looking great. Um, what was the the hope there, or the messages going out to the team and? and and you know what you saw as as part of the comeback. Yeah, even even fifteen three, there was a couple of times there were half half chances to to get them on the on the left edge, particularly one time. Um, and so we just felt if we could hold the ball, um, that that we would create chances. Um, we just had to nail them. There's a few we didn't. Obviously, when we went right up that left hand touch line. Um, in the second half and, and got penalised for a neck roll. That was really disappointing because uh, we'd got riding behind them. Um, but at 15-3, we just hadn't had a lot of ball at that stage or field position. I think we got three set pieces in the attacking zone um, in that first half and, and, and that was enough for us to be in front at half-time. I know you're not... What did you think of uh, Swali's uh, debut then? I thought he was strong. Uh, you know, I thought he was really well supported by Lenny Ekitau. Uh Lenny was outstanding. Even right at the end of the game, he he, he took the corner, um, drew the defender, released Max Jorgensen. So um, I thought those two they dovetailed pretty well uh, through that midfield. Joseph obviously got a few kickoffs back for us. Um, he, he's a bit of a, an aerial freak, um, but. Uh, at the same time, it, it, it was a good learning experience for, for Joseph as well. I know there was some doubts expressed about him being selected and, and the risk. Um, I think people would now see the opportunity of, of involving a, a young man like that, um, particularly the way he prepared during the week. I, I thought he was really professional. Alan, um, how big a win is that? You played in a lot of test matches. Um, where does that rank for you? And... Um, what does it mean for this side in this in this period that you're going through right now? Oh, mate, it's up there. Um, I think the only one out of the playing group in that change room who's beaten England at Twickenham and was Slips. Um, you know, so everyone else wearing that jersey has the first taste of victory here. So it just proves how hard it is to uh, to beat England here at Twickenham. And um, came off the back of you know a great week of prep, um, even last week. Um, back back home in Sydney, and that's a credit to the whole squad. You know, a lot of our boys who didn't play today, um, you know, put us under the pump throughout the whole week and uh, prepared us really well. You know, so um, that's definitely something for us to continue to improve on and understand how important that is throughout the rest of the Grand Slam. There's only one win, Joe, but how important do you think this this was to, after three successive defeats, and, you know, just for the, for the morale of the team? Yeah, yeah. You know, you're always trying to build belief, particularly from where we were this time last year. Um, you know, it, and and even you know, I, we have a totally new staff almost. So I, I didn't even know um, some of the some of the people who were going to be in the staff, the performance staff, the the analysts, the um, the, the physios. The, so getting them to gel together, and um, you know, I. I'd, I'd probably coach against Alan a few times, but I, I didn't know him well. And, and building those relationships and, and building a, a team, um, it, it takes time. And, and there were things out there that we'll look at and we'll say, "Wow, you know, we could do that better." And there are things that we'll try to build on that, that we that we did quite well. So, you know, we, we'd be uh, pretty short-term focused from 
that perspective, but as, as the coaches, we've got a long-term aim. We know what's coming up next year in the middle of the year, um, and we know the quality of, of what's coming um, in July uh, 2025. So I- everything we do now in the next three weeks will be, will be really important in building the, the, the belief to, to make sure that we're ready for that in, um, in seven months' time. Eight months' time. <clears throat> yeah, as I say, we, the Grand Slam may still be alive, but um, I, I think for us, Principality Stadium next next week. Um, obviously, Wales play Fiji tomorrow. Uh, we'll try to get a bit of a look at that. We've played Wales twice this this year so far, but in very different circumstances. I think they've got some key players back, the likes of Jack Morgan, Adam Beard. Um, those, those sort of guys, a few changes as well with um, younger guys being given an opportunity by Gats uh, for tomorrow's game. So we'll watch that with interest and, and try to just work our way forward. We won't look too far ahead. Scotland obviously really impressive against Fiji last week. Um, and then uh, I still know some of those Irish guys quite well, so we'll, we'll see where we get to there. One on the front here, please. Hi, Alan. Um, congratulations on the win today. Um, there's obviously been a lot of chat about this England pack and just, you know, they might try and be quite dominant today. You boys really, really stood up. So how how does that feel, knowing that, you know, you've come away from, from that with a really, really strong performance from the Aussie pack? Yeah, I think it's a really good feeling. Um, you know, and like throughout our whole preview, um, you know, for the last couple of weeks, like we could see how... Um, you know, great that they've been. You know, we know how physical the match is always going to be against, um, you know, the England pack. So uh, we had one eye on that, but most importantly, we're focusing on ourselves in, in, internally, you know, and trying to make a statement as, as, as a pack, um, you know, especially throughout the set piece. Cheers. And quick, quick, to Nick, please. and quick question for you, Joe. So you're obviously one stage in the game today, 15-3 down. You've had some tough defeats this year. Was that resilience that the boys showed out there on the pitch, you know, the kind of the thing you take away most from that game today? Yeah, I think we've demonstrated a little bit. Um, you know, 21-7 down, 28-7 by half time against the All Blacks. Uh, or 20, we got back to 28-14 by half time, but at one stage, 28-7 down against the All Blacks, and in the end, we lost 31-28. You know, and I, I feared that we were going to have something similar again today at one stage um, when Mara Otoje scored with. Um, a minute to go, or two minutes to go, and we'd only have a minute with the ball in play. But yeah, you know, I, I thought the finish, um, as I mentioned earlier, with Lenny Ikato, um, Ben Donaldson coming off the bench and tipping it on, and, and Max Jorgensen finishing it for his first Test try. I think you'll remember that one. Um, that, that, that's a pretty special moment for that young man as well. Thanks, Nick. So how much confidence would a performance like that give you that? Yeah, well, that's that's a challenge. Um, you know, all, all, all I can guarantee is we'll keep working hard, um, and and if if we work hard, then then hopefully we'll, we'll earn um, a, a bit of respect around the challenge that will be for the Lions. I'm under no illusions, though. I, Andy Farrell's obviously I, I coached with Andy for a long time and and know him well, and he, he'll have a he'll have a really strong side and 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 have them really well prepared. So um, I, I think that's the long term plan, but but the, the short term focus is, is certainly just on next week. And just on Joe Sorelli, over here a lot of people probably wouldn't have heard of him before this week. It was an impressive debut. How much potential does he have? Yeah, he, he played in school, um, and and he came through the rugby union pathway. So he played for Australian under 18 schoolboys. So he, he certainly has a, a rugby pedigree, albeit having played a, a few years of professional rugby league, which has made him a really professional uh, young man, 21 years old. He, he is uh, incredibly uh, diligent around his preparation, and... That diligence, I think, pays off in the way that he performs. He, he you know, he, he's still probably finding his feet in the in the game. There are su- subtleties that are that are very different, but um, with that diligent work ethic, 
um, that professionalism and the athleticism that he possesses, um, yeah, I, I, I feel it was a really confidence-boosting debut. Thanks, Alan. Thanks, Alan. Uh, Joe, just, just want to ask, um, you, you mentioned picking up the team from last year. How big a job has it been for you to turn around this team? And, and what, what did you find when you, when you, had, you know, had your first day of the office? Um, yeah. I'm not sure we've turned around. We just, we, well, yeah, yeah. I think we're turning. Um, yeah, I think it is a process, and so uh, you know, and inevitably, um, progress is never never linear. So there'll, there'll be a few peaks and troughs on the way further forward. But um, I, I found a, a a really good bunch of of people, um, both in the staff and, and in the playing group. And I think if you start with a really good bunch of people. I think you can grow the players from there. Um, the players can grow confidence in themselves. Um, and, and I thought some of the skill exhibited today, some of the things that we've been working really hard on were were certainly visible to the coaching staff, um, which gives us a bit of confidence, certainly gives the players a bit of confidence. So, yeah, I'm not quite sure where they ended up at the end of last year other than what I saw from a an opposition perspective, really. I was coaching a different team and and was um, was delighted when w we ended up on the right side of the results from um, from that year. But um, I think there's there's green shoots, certainly. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, Joe, I don't want to be negative on this great win, um, but besides the flashy stuff, you kind of alluded to some things that I still work on. So the ex 22 exits, you know, game line dominance from side five. How much progress do you think you've made in those sort of like more boring aspects of, of the game, you know what I mean? Yeah, we, you know, we, we try to build our boring um, and and uh, try to be really good at those things. Hard against, um, yeah, England, they're so combative. That That's that's hard work. Like, But uh, at the same time, I think the boys really rolled their sleeves up. I was delighted with our loose trio. Uh, you know, as, as much as you say getting game line, I, th I thought Rob Valentini got game line. Harry Wilson got cane line. Gee, they um, they were really combative, and and I thought Fraser uh, McWright was was a fantastic link for us. You know, up that left hand touch toward the end, um, through the middle, another time he he was a guy in the in the right position to handle the ball and and move it on. So um, yeah, I, I I think between that tight five and and the middies and, and edges uh, that that loose trio tonight they were they were outstanding. Last one at the back, please. Gerald, you just told me I'd be fascinated to hear your analysis of, of Marcus Smith as a sort of the attack in the dress for England. I don't know whether you know, when he's moved back to fullback, was that a sort of a relief for you? Do, do you see it? I don't know how you think maybe I, it's the best use of him. Yeah, I, I thought he's pretty useful, all right. Um, you know, right from the start of the game, as I said, he's the guy who slides a ball through for for Ollie Lawrence to pick back up again. He, he pulls the strings really well. And, uh, you know, we were keen to suffocate him today, but he, he just kept breathing. Um, and um, he finds little spaces between you. Um, and he's even confident bring the ball back. He's not afraid of the, of the physical contact. You know, we have, a, we have a chase line with some big men in the middle of it, and he... He, he doesn't mind picking them out and and creating a a, a focus point that, that England can base their next phase off. So uh, yeah, I, I, I thought he was very good. Um, really disappointed to see him nail that conversion um, to uh, to give England the lead. I thought I thought it was just going to maybe hit the hit the right hand upright or fade, but um, yeah, uh, that, he, he is a class player without a doubt. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it, Tom. Oh, thanks.